Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to talk to you about all of the sets that I worked on while working for LEGO. 16 in total, 3 of them haven't been released yet. And I guess it can be fun for you guys to know all of the easter eggs and little known details about each one of them, so let's get started. When I first started in Creator 3-in-1, I was very eager to get my own design briefing and start straight away designing a box of my own, but things didn't work that way at first, so first I was helping out some colleagues doing their alternative models in some of their models. My first design task was helping out Morton GW in his set, making an alternative model. He was working on the Park Street townhouse as the lead designer and I helped him out doing the B model, the Cafe Corner as I like to call it, a little homage to the first modular building that LEGO ever released, the Cafe Corner, designed by Jamie Burrard. The model itself has nothing amazing about it, I would say, but I'm quite proud of the way it opens up. And I thought that I was kind of smart of doing a passageway so that the scooter could ride on. Scooter, by the way, that I really pushed for in the final design. Back then, scooters weren't really common on LEGO sets, so I really pushed for it so that we could have, and you guys could have, some scooters on your collections. And my second design task, while helping out Morton GW in his Park Street townhouse set, was helping out Jeremy in his own set, the Turbo Track Racer, a very cool blue car from Creator from 2017. And I was tasked with designing some or making some concepts for alternative models. I made a bunch of them, which turned out really cool, I guess. I was kind of challenged to try to make a forklift because someone had that crazy idea at a design meeting. And you know me, I can never say no to a challenge, so I put all my efforts into it and I actually managed to make a semi-decent forklift as a concept model. So in the end I got to design the forklift on that one and also made the concept model for the F1 car that we see in the final product, which Jeremy took on. And after that I got to design the first set on my own, the modular poolside holiday. There's nothing particular about it. It's a small house with a, with a pool and I think all of the modules work really well and you can reconfigure the house in different things. Also the B and C models were quite challenging because with the same elements that we had in the box there weren't a lot of options that we could do and so they would have to be houses mainly. So trying to make different houses out of the exactly same bricks uh, windows and doors was quite a challenge, but I think in the end it turned out uh, quite cool. And I'm not exactly sure of this, but I know for sure that either the doors or the window panes in dark blue were a new color change made specially for that set. At the time, friends were also doing some winter related uh, sets, I believe, and they were using it either one or the other, but either way, now you have dark blue doors and dark blue window panes. You're welcome. The next set I worked on was the modular skate house. This one. So once again I was tasked of continuing the work on the modular uh, concept for the creator houses and this time around the skate house. This one has a lot more easter eggs and stuff even on it which I'm about to talk to you guys. So if you notice the main characters are like carryovers or older selves of the poolside holiday set. So the guy is exactly the same and it has the same wig and the expressions are the same. So I meant it in a way that the kids, the brother and sister would grow up and then continue on with their lives and having fun. And this time around with the skate house. So less known detail, but that was the way I hoped to design it. Also, on this one, we introduced for the first time ever, I believe, uh, some printed elements on creator sets, which was very unusual. Creator wouldn't be doing uh, new molds or new elements and stuff like that. We would always use whatever the rest of the company was using at the time. We did do color changes, so existing elements and then color changing them to other colors, which we did do. But this time around, it was different we got the possibility of doing some printed elements. So in this set in particular, we have two brand new printed elements. There is a two by two tile 
with a, a racing car game kind of uh, print on it, which is like a cross promotion to another uh, Lego set, a Lego Creator 3-in-1 set that we did in the same year, done by Jeremy. And the other element is a 1x2x2 brick in dark red, which has some graffiti printing on it. And in the graffiti, if you can look closely, there's like a TC in there, which stands for, I don't know, the company. It stands for Tiago Caterino, of course, and I'm very proud of that. And also in the same set, you can also see that the climbing wall has some studs, round plates uh, with a special set of colors. It's like white, black, blue, yellow and red, which are the colors of my LUG logo. LUG stands for LEGO Users Group, so before joining LEGO, I was part of this LEGO Users Group, which usually have like online forums where we can talk about whatever we like, and in this case it was, of course, about LEGO and where we can showcase our mocks and ideas and whatnot, so it was kind of an homage to my LUG. And Comunidades Ernov 3 set has to be the only LUG in the world to have given six model designers to the Lego company. Yeah, that's right. So first there was Marcus Bessa, who usually works on IP related stuff like Harry Potter, superheroes and Jurassic. Then there was uh, Ricardo, which went to work for Friends and he made like pretty much everything of Friends that you can imagine. And he's still there, I believe. Then there was me, who went to work for Creator 3-in-1. There was uh, Cesar, who worked and still works, I believe, for Star Wars. And then there was Pablo, who also went to work for Superheroes and now he's been doing lots of different stuff. And after that, there was another Ricardo that got hired. So there you have it. Comunidades are not set. Lego, gotta thank them, yeah. Then, I think this was about the time that I worked on these three different polybags. So this was the first of them. There was a concept model of these lying around somewhere from previous years because we usually do a lot of concept work for the polybags that we usually do. And one of them was this one. So I took over because uh, people find it uh, fun to make like miniatures of uh, previous creator sets. There's a lot of miniatures of uh, sets done in polybags or gift with purchase sets. And this one's one of them. This is inspired by another Creator 3-in-1, uh, blue, white, and yellow plane done by Mike Psyche. Another one was the Pug. This was an initial concept done by Jeremy. It was so amazing that everyone loved it. And then I got tasked of designing it. And I had a lot of fun in this one, but it was quite challenging because if you can see here, there's like, two other pictures of other models. So this is actually a three-in-one polybag. Usually creator polybags only have one model, but this one, you can actually build three different models, although you have to download online the instructions for the koala and the turkey. But this was a lot of fun. I And I even added the fire hydrant in there. And in the packaging, you can see the pug lifting his leg. Kind of funny, right? Another one was the Christmas train. This was fully designed by me. And I set myself the challenge of making the biggest uh, Lego train I could possibly have inside of a polybag. So this is the final result. And we have a three wagon uh, train inside of a polybag. So you can see the steam engine and then the middle carriage, which transports some gifts. And then the final carriage, which is supposed to be passengers uh, carriage. I'm quite proud of this one. And this is always nice as a Christmas gift. So these are great for that. And I got a bunch of them. Next up is the BBT one. But this one, there was a small team of designers, like five or six designers who built crazy amounts of small models like these classic inspired uh, models to make this product line, which in the end didn't get the, the, the attention it deserved for some reason, but either way, I think it turned out really well. So in this model in particular, 
I was responsible of designing this one and the Loch Ness monster kind of thing and then the drum set and the other models were done by other designers but then I took them through the process of making them buildable and stable and whatnot. Next up is the biggest creator set that I've worked on the mobile stunt show. Finally, I was given like a proper vehicle to work on because previous to that it was mainly houses and small sets. So I was really, really happy to work on a, on a vehicle for a change. So this one was a very challenging one because it had a lot of functions involved. There's like a foldable ramp, there's the ramp on top of the truck itself. There's also the monster truck, which has working suspension. Also working on the B and C models was super cool. I'm quite proud of the, the Roadster car that I have in there and also the, the pickup truck, which also has a really neat function. And the Draxer race is also really cool, although not very safe for one of the drivers because there's only one helmet on the set. And then the ship in a bottle. This was a Lego Ideas model that I had the pleasure to work on. And I'm not really sure if you're familiar with the Lego Ideas platform, but all in all, there's this platform online where you can submit your own ideas. So maybe you build something or you make a render of something that you think it would be a great LEGO product. You can submit it there in the LEGO Ideas platform. And if you get to 10,000 votes before time runs out, then LEGO will look at your idea and really think of it as a possible product. This idea was done by Jake Sadovich. He did an amazing concept model that got the 10,000 votes like really, really quick. And the story behind the way I got this set or that I got to work on this set was actually kind of interesting. I overheard this conversation between Gemma and Tara. Tara was the design lead for uh, Lego Ideas at the time and Gemma was a designer that was working on the Women's of NASA set also from Lego Ideas. And I overheard them talking about not having a designer for the ship in a bottle. So I really wanted to work on this set. So in that afternoon, I made a ship in a bottle my own model, my own version of it, as a, an introduction letter to the design manager at the time. So I built it, I left it at her desk, and in the next day we talked and then everything was aligned, so I got to work on the set. This was the hardest set that I have worked on until that point, and the reason was very simple. How do you do a Lego bottle, a Lego glass bottle? The amount of transparent elements was uh, very limited at the time and the initial idea done by Jake Sadovich was done using a very, very old element, which made total sense, but we weren't producing it anymore. So I made some concepts, but the thing wasn't really working without the, that element. So I really pushed for it and I really tried to convince the people of if we're going to do this, we have to do this right. And to do this right, we really need to use this element because there is no suitable replacement right now in the Lego assortment. And we also can't do new elements for this one. So we got to bring back that old element. And we managed to convince the people that that was the right way to do it. So yeah, there's a couple of Easter eggs on this one. The wax seal element in the front of the bottle has a TC initials again. I have no idea what it stands for. And there's a Portuguese flag in this one. You can see on the back of the ship a flag which is green and red, Portugal. At the time, Teal was making a return to the Lego palette of colors, but there weren't a lot of sets which have the colors. So I tried to put as much as possible inside of the set, although you actually don't see it from the outside. So the ship has some plates inside it and also the stand where the bottle holds. There's also a lot of teal elements that you can find in there. And there's also the purple uh, minifig heads for the people who like to build monochromatic uh, minifigs. I put it there on purpose just for you guys. And this is one of the last models that I've worked on while in Creator 3-in-1. I quite like this one because I can cross off the buckets list doing a space related set. Although I had done a shuttle uh, in the BBT set, but this one looks really, really cool. This was then inspired in some concept models done by Mike Psyche and Martin Ralph. And we mashed some ideas together to put this very unrealistic idea 
as a Lego model because you would never have an American style uh, truck carrying a shuttle on its trailer. But either way, we have to think of the kids and the playability. So we combine the two known icons together, the American style truck and then the shuttle on the back and trailer to make a killer product in my eyes. I'm also quite proud of the alternative models on this one. There's this truck carrying an helicopter on its back and sometimes we add some special elements to make alternative models work. So in this case, we added the helicopter propeller on top so that we would be able to make an helicopter as an alternative model. And then the sim model, it has this SUV type truck thing carrying a camper van on its back. And I like how clean it is. It almost feels like a main model to me, at least. I really like the clean lines that I was able to get and the clean shape of the trailer in the back. If you pay close attention to the box art, you see that the graphic designers have some fun themselves. So they made some cross promotion with another of our creator products. So in the front of the box, near the moon, you can see like this jet flying. And that's a reference to another creator three in one set from that wave. And in the back of the box where we are showing the SUV and the trailer in the back, in the background, you can see a UFO, uh, flying saucer disc flying in there. And I think that's so funny. And this is the last poly bag that I've worked on, a Santa. So the initial briefing for this one was, let's not make a Santa this year. <laughs> See how that worked out, right? This was also a challenge because it's very hard to differentiate when you've done like a couple of Santas in the past. But I think in the end, I managed to find a very different style from previous Santas done in Creator Polybag. So I was quite happy about it. And you still have like a, a small a light blue, blue train and then small gift in there. And lastly, the gingerbread house. I think I've talked a lot about this one already, but actually the story how I got to design it was kind of fun. So at the time I was working on this creator three in one uh, twin rotor helicopter thingy. And then my second child was born. So I went out of the office on paternity leave for a couple of weeks. Uh, while I was on paternity leave, I got a message from my manager saying that, sorry, Tiago, but we have to take you out of the uh, helicopter project because things need to move on and we can't be uh, late delivering this one. So at the time I was kind of sad, but in the same message, he also said, but we have something lined up for you. Mysterious. It was very mysterious, but I was very curious to know what was it. So when I got back into the office, there it was, I got assigned the gingerbread house. So in a way, things worked out and having the possibility of working on a creator expert model was also on my bucket list. So I can cross off that from the list. I've already talked about some of the Easter eggs on this one. You can watch the video here or here. I can never know. But the snowblower that was designed by Jamie Perard, which I liked so much that I haven't changed the piece at a point in time where he was helping out with some details. There's also the, the towels in the bathroom in the upstairs floor, which are meant to represent the Portuguese flag. About this one, I can also say that it was very challenging to do a different Christmas tree because almost every year, on the Winter Village sets, there's a different Christmas tree in there. So I thought, how the hell am I going to differentiate from the previous ones? But I think I did an okay job. The Gingerbread House was not the last set that I've worked on. After that, I still worked on three different ones. And I guess since I'm not working for Lego, I could just tell you what they are, right? They are a... They're really cool. That's all I'm allowed to say. But if you liked the video, please leave a like. In the comments down below, ask me anything about these sets. I would be very happy to answer you guys. And subscribe so you don't miss the next videos. Let's build something fun today. Woo. And I guess it... Today's video... When I started... So...